Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, June 9th, 2014. It is 7.15, and I do call this meeting to order. I'd like uh, everyone to know that we are being filled tonight, both by ACMI and by members of the audience. Um, I'd like to begin um, by noting that we're meeting tonight with heavy hearts uh, following the passing of John Greeley, a former town employee and brother of our colleague Kevin. Um, you know, the Greeleys have been assets to Arlington for a long time and we certainly mourn with them. So please, uh, if you would join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna begin tonight uh, for, with a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Assessors. We're joined by Chairman Kevin Feely and Member Mary Wynne Stanley O'Connor uh, to discuss um, the appointment and its process um, for a new member of the Board of Assessors. Um, to begin this, I'm going to ask um, Town Council uh, Heim to discuss kind of where we are in the process and how we've got here. Sure. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, the Board of Assessors, having properly notified the Board of Selectmen and the Town Clerk of the resignation of Mr. Jim Doherty, the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Assessors must convene a joint body to fill the vacancy within the Board of Assessors pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 41, Section 11. And the key things I want to highlight uh, for the members, uh, remaining members of the Board of Assessors and the Board of Selectmen are as follows. Um, under Section 11, this joint body um, is to select an interim assessor by a simple majority vote. The selected interim assessor will serve until the time of the first regularly scheduled Town of Arlington annual election, which should be in April of 2015. And the Board of, and the board of Selectmen at their convenience should vote to approve a special election for the elected replacement. That person will only serve out the remainder of Mr. Doherty's term, which I believe by that point in time shall be about a year. Um, the only strict requirement for an interim appointee is that they're a registered voter of the town of Arlington. The law doesn't require that this specific position be posted, um, but it does require that both boards share any application information that they receive, such as a resume or anything else, and I believe that's been the case here. Um, the joint body, and this is an important point that I want to clarify, has a reasonable amount of time to appoint um, an interim assessor. Uh, chapter 41, section 11 is written a little ambiguously, and so there was some initial confusion about what time frame there was for appointing an interim assessor. The point I want to emphasize here after speaking with the State Elections Division is that um, the one full week notice that you'll see in the language of chapter 41, section 11 does not reference the amount of time this joint body has to appoint after getting a notice of the vacancy. It references the amount of time that a meeting must be noticed in advance before such a selection can be made. Now, in this instance, this meeting was noticed one week ago so that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Assessors joint body may tonight select an interim assessor, but you do have more time if you feel it's appropriate to take more time to uh, discuss, debate, and ultimately vote on an assessor. And if there's any questions about the process or the parameters, I'm happy to answer them here. Thank you. So I, I think it would be appropriate to perhaps have our two members of the assessors come up to the microphone and perhaps conduct the meeting um, in that fashion. No, I'm fine. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, you could you sit down. No, I'm fine. Really I'm sick. fine. That's right. Um, I didn't quite get your question, actually. But um, no, just if you, um, I think, for the purpose of conducting oh, our joint oh, meeting. Oh, all right. Okay. I, I just had one question to the town council. <laughs> yes. Uh, my memory is that the 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 the, the, the person that appointed to the next annual election, and the, and you don't have to call a special election. You were using the term, I think, special election. I wasn't sure what that meant. It means that the clerk has to put the vacancy on the ballot, I believe. And yeah, I apologize. So just to be clear, it's not that we're holding an election at a special time. Yeah, that's that we're putting I, I, I didn't, yeah. The that's vacant true. election position on the ballot. Yeah. 
that's fine. That was, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I um, think that if we can open it up to all the members for discussion. Um, Mr. Dunn. So um, when, we no when this meeting notice came out, uh, I was under the impression, I think we all were, that we were under a more constrained time frame. And I think that within that constrained time frame, the amount of uh, notification that you know, was in the advocate, we did the notice and stuff like that was appropriate. Now that I understand that we have more time, I'd re really like to take advantage of that time. And so um, I, I apologize for, to you know, unusual attendees who I'm asking to come back again, but I'd like to move to postpone um, to uh, June 23rd, and that will give us more time to, uh, and I, I'd look to the rest of the board to talk about, or, uh, about when we'd like to see resumes by, but I'd also like to do you know, reference checks and do some phone calls and all that good stuff. So um, that's my motion. I, I'll second the motion although I suspect we'll have to discuss the date with um, sure. to make sure, I mean, we have to make sure that our colleagues on the assessors yeah, are available. Mary, yeah. Mary, yeah. Uh, I, I am gonna be out of the country presenting a paper in uh, Beirut wow. from June 23rd to the 30th, so those two Mondays I will not be here if you need me here for that. So I, uh, um, then I guess I, I'm gonna ch just say I move to postpone and then we can, set, we can choose another date and it's in, in a separate motion we so choose. And I still second. Okay. Further discussion? Um, I, I, actually, I absolutely agree with my, my colleague here. I think that now that we've had the clarification on the, um, the actual law, it does make a lot of sense to, to set out exactly um, you know, what our criteria will be, what our process will be actually for selection so that candidates coming forward will have a good um, expectation of what, what they can expect. And actually what the deadlines are also, because I think the way that we're right now with our um, expectation of coming here tonight to appoint. My understanding would be that if somebody had walked through the door and wanted to apply right now on the spot, they were certainly welcome to do so. I, I think that we could set some some parameters and some deadlines that would give the opportunity for some uh, due diligence. I guess the example that's closest um, to my mind is, as you all know, I was an elected official who resigned a seat uh, over on, on the school committee and when I resigned, I know that the school committee did act with, with fairly quick, um, under a fairly quick timetable, but they did advertise and post for the position and then publicly interviewed all, all candidates um, and gave everyone an equal opportunity to, to answer questions from, from uh, committee members. I, we could discuss the exact process that, that uh, we might want to take uh, under this, but I think having a little bit more lead time, once we settle on a date to meet again, maybe we could work backwards from that with a, a deadline for applications to be received. Mr. Chairman, no. 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 Are, are you all set? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, thanks. Mr. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't object to an extension of time, but I think we do need to, to have a time firm that we, do, yeah. that we do get to a vote and have a replacement because it's a little different with nine-person board or a five-person board but when you're operating with third-person board, three-people board, and, and you're one shot, and unfortunately, I have to go back into the hospital in a few months. So we need, I, I don't, I have no problem with a, a short time, but we, we need to hold ourselves to a schedule on that. Yeah. I, I concur. And that's sort of uh, tied into the, I have two questions. Um, first to our colleagues on the Board of Assessors. Is there a date by which you know right now whether it's doing regular due course business, that you need three members? Well, we can operate with two because it's a majority, but if um, Kevin is gonna go back in for some more uh, surgery, we need something done in the next 45 days. That's mm -hmm. it. Well, yeah, I think maybe even quicker than that, but I, yeah, we couldn't um, give you a drop dead date, but um, the, the DOI does require certain requirements for, for a full board, and, and I believe the purpose of the statute is not to leave a board with a vacancy very long. I mean, I'm not, I don't know what very long is, but I think the reason the statue is because I think governments used to leave vacancies on the boards and not fill them. So now they have a mandatory statue that says you've got to fill them. So and if the board doesn't fill them, then the selectmen fill them. You know, so I so think what I'm hearing that, that is, say it takes us two weeks I, or three, yeah. whatever, should you need to have a meeting, it is appropriate for you all to meet as a as two members yes. of the yes. Board of Assessors, yeah. you can oh, still yeah. do we can still the business, business. Yeah, we're, we're DORs okay with yes. that? Yeah. yeah, we're fine. Okay. 
Okay, and then the only other thing I would put out is um, when whoever, through the chairman, um, I'm, I'm certainly open to it. Doesn't necessarily have to be a Monday night. Mm -hmm. I would assume I a weeknight yeah. so that other people that can come. But if, if if the schedules are that way, that everyone can make it on a Tuesday or Thursday or whatever, with the proper notice. I agree. Oh. Um, so it certainly it, it feels like we have a consensus headed towards uh, postponing. Uh, do we want to leave the chairs to set a date or do we want to try to do it right now? Um, I, I think that both Mr. Feely and I can work to set a date. I do think that we should, uh, before we leave tonight, we should set a date for when resumes um, will be accepted until. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see perhaps um, three weeks from tonight, um, we'll post until then, and resumes will be accept will, resumes will be accepted up until three Mondays from now, if that works for. How, how about we think that's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Either ten business days, maybe. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Could I make a suggestion that, that it be um, maybe two weeks from tomorrow? Because I believe we have a meeting on the 29th, correct? That scheduled the board. Our board does on the 29th. And I know with Nova's agenda, you're, you're looking for the previous Tuesday for, for submissions of reference material. So that, that would put us, I think, two weeks out from tomorrow. No, no, I'm saying that, I'm, no, I'm saying even if, uh, even if we, we make the deadline two weeks from tomorrow, and even if our meeting is a little bit af after that, at least in that, that case, we would have it in our packets to review by the by the next selectmen's um, meeting. I think we have 29th on it. Yeah. You, are you referring 28th. to July or 28th? Yeah, no, July 28th no. would be our meeting. Yeah, and June 23rd, and then July 28th. Yeah, oh, June, oh, oh, June, oh, oh, oh. Okay. I know we were going to be here on Mr. Byrne, I very much defer to the chairs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Feely? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah I, why don't we work out a date? I, Okay. As you know, I think that's a little bit too long. So I'd yeah, like to no, see if we can. I understand the need for the uh, for for you know, probably I understand the need for a week and a half or two weeks to give yeah. people a chance to get the resumes in, and then I'd like to try to make sure we don't have too long a review period so that we can get to it. Yeah. So so if you post at least for two weeks. Yeah. So we'll we'll say that we'll post it for at least two weeks, and we'll discuss on the date. Okay. That. So we have a motion to postpone, postpone. to a date set by the chairs. To a date set by the and chairs. Um, do we do have? Do, does the motion say something about posting, or what? what what's the? We purpose? haven't had a motion on that. Uh, do you want it formally said, or yeah. what? Or how would? Have, well, what would motion would you like? To move to put to that the, uh, the applications are open until at least Monday the twenty third. That's two weeks. From That's two weeks from today. That works. For me. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please. Or we don't need a roll call vote, do we? I think you need. I would conduct all votes. Yes. 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 So do we, we need a roll call vote on the motion to postpone as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, my intent was to um, to withdraw my motion to postpone and make it a postpone and set date in one motion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, do we have any public comments, Mr. Harrington? Um, and please limit the public comments to what was discussed here tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Harrington. Stephen Harrington, Columbia Road, town meeting member. Um, I just have uh, one comment about the uh, board of assessors. My understanding, I, I asked um, Mr. Spidell, who used to be the director of assessments, uh, for some records back in March, and I never heard a response from him, which was unusual because it was a pretty simple request. He usually does it. And so at town meeting, uh, all department heads are supposed to be there, and no Mr. Spidell. And Mr. Doherty, who's no longer on the board of assessors, who we're here because of tonight's resignation, it was unusual that he wouldn't have mentioned that Mr. Spidell's um, uh, employment had ended. And so um, that's not a good thing. We still don't know when Mr. Spidell sort of left as a public. Uh, we don't know 
um, under what circumstances. And it's a little concerning that the resignation that has precipitated this meeting uh, from Mr. Doherty occurred um, rather suddenly. And um, the fear in the community is that um, he's going to be appointed as a director of assessments. And I'd like to make sure that the current board of assessors knows that that would be something that would be seen as a very big negative uh, for the board of assessors. Thank you very much. Could yeah, you again, comment on that? yes, please, Mary. Uh, personnel matters do not get aired in public as the board well knows, so that um, there could be no discussion about what was going on with Mr. Spidell, and we will not discuss it here because of the agreement that was reached. And I'm, we're not going to comment on the rest of that soliloquy. So. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. So I move to adjourn the joint meeting. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. We'll need another roll call vote. Marie? Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Fiero. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, um, we uh, have to begin a proclamation for Childhood Cancer Awareness Week, which will run from June 8th to June 14th, and uh, I will read that proclamation now. Whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection report cancer is the leading cause of death by disease among U.S. children between infancy and age 15. And this tragic disease is detected in nearly 15,000 of our country's young people each and every year. And whereas one in five of our nation's children loses his or her battle of cancer, and many infants, children, and teens will suffer from long-term effect of comprehensive treatment, including secondary cancers. And whereas, founded 20 years ago by Stephen Firestein, a member of the philanthropic Max Factor family, the, cancer, the American Cancer Fund for Children, Inc., and Kids Cancer Connection, Inc., are dedicated to helping these children and their families. And whereas, the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection provide a variety of vital patient psycho, psychosocial <clears throat> services to children undergoing cancer treatment at Dana Farber Cancer Institute, Boston Children's Hospital, UMass Memorial Medical Center, as well as participating hospitals throughout the country, thereby enhancing the quality of life for these children and their families. And whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection also sponsor nationwide Courageous Kid Recognition Award ceremonies and hospital celebrations in honor of a child's determination and bravery to fight the battle against childhood cancer. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, as the members of the Board of Selectmen, designate June 8th to June 14th as Childhood Cancer Awareness Week in Arlington. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> One nothing vote. Moving on, we have a report on community safety in Arlington. Chief Ryan. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for taking the time out of your agenda tonight um, to have my report. Uh, just quickly, if I may follow up on the chairman's comments about uh, Mr. Greeley. Uh, he, he was an employee of community safety, was a lead dispatcher when he retired. Um, I had the unique experience of having been his subordinate when I was um, working uh, summers as a college and high school student and then returning and, and uh, a little role reversal uh, where he was my subordinate. But he, he was instrumental at rebuilding our 911 center and our primary public safety answering point as our lead dispatcher and a dedicated uh, 
uh, great employee and wonderful human being. So thank you for recognizing him. Of course. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about crime in Arlington. I know we've had um, a number of high-profile events in the past year, and uh, and as we um, uh, talk with our partners in the community, political leadership, uh, you know, there's a lot of feedback where uh, some folks might be fearing that crime is on the increase, and I'm happy to tell you that that's not the case. Um, we. You know, while anything I say is not intended to minimize the seriousness of any of the crimes we've had, nor is it to uh, offend any of the survivors or victims in any way. Uh, those are serious crimes. We continue to uh, represent the survivors and victims and try to prosecute those crimes as uh, effectively as we possibly can. But with that said, um, as, I, as I said, crime is trending down. If we look at uh, the past five-year window, Overall crime uh, is down about 24%, and about 10% uh, of that uh, overall crime is made up of violent crime itself. Um, and just from 2012 to 2013, overall crime uh, is down 5%. Uh, when, when talking about um, part one crimes, the most serious crimes as defined by the FBI, uh, again, we're seeing a, a decrease um, uh, every calendar year from 2009 to 2013, um, uh, we've seen, um, almost every year we've seen a decrease in, in uh, Part 1 crimes as well. So I just wanted to, you know, sort of announce that publicly, that the data demonstrate that crime is trending down. Arlington is a safe community. Uh, I wish I could take credit for the fact uh, that crime is trending down, but the fact is um, we we work in a wonderful community where the community and the neighborhoods are engaged with their police officers. I have an incredibly um, professional team of police officers that partner with the community and work together to, to address uh, crime and, and problems in neighborhoods. And, and that results, you know, the, the, the studies are abundantly clear that those partnerships and addressing of the quality of life issues um, have a, a positive effect on on uh, decreasing uh, crime in the community. So uh, again, I wish I could take credit, but it's, it's the great police officers, it's our great dispatchers, it's our entire staff partnering with a great community um, to make us all safe. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Don't know if I missed anything, Mr. Manager, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions while I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight, Chief. Um, and you're modest. We're <coughs> very lucky to have you here, and I understand that you have a uh, great team below you. And, um, we're very fortunate to be in Arlington with you and um, all the police officers that are looking out for our safety as well as all our other um, public <coughs> safety employees um, in the Appreciate fire department and emergency services. Um, that being said, do we have any questions from the board? I, I just want to publicly thank the chief in a very personal way. I, I think you know I'm a Stratton parent and I think you know there's been a lot of concern up in Stratton following some media reports that came yes, out. Sir. And, so now for the second time, I think in about six months, you've been up uh, in front of some large crowds up at Stratton, the first time on the Turkey Hill incidents and, and uh, now on the, this, this latest incident that was school-based. And um, I can just tell you from speaking to the community uh, up there that people really do appreciate you coming out and communicating and the way that you've uh, listened to the concerns that have, uh, have been raised. It's uh, very much appreciated. And, um, and uh, it's true community policing. And uh, thank you, Mr. Carroll. So, it's fine. I'm going to piggyback on my colleagues' comments. I also, in part, do want to thank all the men and women um, who do work for you, administrative, the police officers, um, dispatch. Um, I think it's always been an open and transparent um, community safety effort. Um, but just sort of echoing what Mr. Kiro has said, I do want to say having traveled in the legal field and going into Boston and Cambridge, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, um, I really want to thank you personally, Chief, for the way that you have represented um, the town of Arlington, um, the way you've gotten information, appropriate information out, um, and I haven't heard anybody who has said anything negative except for what a great police chief we have. Um, he represents Arlington well, and I know sometimes we don't say it enough, but. Um, I do appreciate um, the way you have conducted yourself, along with all the other men and women um, under your employ. Um, so it starts from the top and goes down, sometimes bottom up, but it definitely starts from the top yeah. and goes Thank down. Thank you again. But again, it, it is a professionally mature team, and in, in every one of these critical incidents, they rose to the occasion and, 
and put the victims first and foremost. And I'm very proud of their performance. Mr. Gunn. Um, my colleague said it better than I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Chief. Okay, good night. Thank you, Chief. Chief. <coughs> Number three, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, as we know, uh, the Mass Ave rebuild project is uh, slowly starting to begin. We've seen signage go up and some uh, light work and surveying beginning. And at the last board meeting, we discussed the communication plan that would be rolled out. And I told the board that we would have the public involvement specialist working for MassDOT uh, from the firm Howard Stein Hudson here, here to meet you. Uh, so that will happen tonight. But MassDOT said we want to do even better than that and really show uh, the commitment to Arlington and the commitment to making this project a success. So we have representatives from MassDOT, from Howard Stein Hudson, uh, from their public involvement team, as well as representatives from J.H. Lynch, the contractor. So from MassDOT, we have Donnie Daly, uh, as well as Chris Leahy. From J.H. Lynch, we have Greg Oswit and Jim LaValle. And from Howard Stein Hudson, we have Nate Cabral Curtis, who's going to be our public involvement specialist on this project, as well as Nick, um, Nick Gross from the public involvement team. So, Donnie, I don't know if you want to say a few words at the outset of the project. Yeah, my name's Don Daly. I work in the Office of Government Affairs uh, out of the Secretary's office, so it's my primary responsibility to interface with state, local, federal delegation, um, the community, so on and so forth, um, as it relates to any concerns, any needs, any modifications um, that we need to make adjustments for going forward. Um, we have a strong team together. Uh, Chuck Leahy, Chuck, you can come on up. He's from Highway District 4. Um, I'm sure you folks know you might know that the highway division is broken up into six districts. Chuck's out of District 4. District 4 happens to be on Route 2 in Arlington, so it's not that far. I mean, District 4 goes all the way up to Newburyport. So um, we have, a, like I said, we have a good team. Nate Cabral um, is from Howard Stein Hudson. They're a public involvement firm that specializes in transportation outreach. Uh, Nate works on a lot of projects with us. Um, one I can speak that I work with him now is the Fort River Bridge down in down in Quincy, Casey Overpass, I-90 Viaduct, so on and so forth. So um, as you folks are well aware, we have a public information meeting next week. We're getting, we're in preparation for that. We have a PowerPoint presentation that's being embedded through the highway division, through the district, that we will be, I don't know, 12 to 14, 16 slides. Um, we will have the same team back, but even more folks will have uh, upper management, um, you know, Scott Kellaway, who's the uh, assistant construction there, will be there among others in District 4. So I don't know if, Chuck, you want to say a, word, a few words on behalf of the district? Uh, no, just that we're excited by the opportunity to be working in the community of Allington, and we think it's going to be a good job. Uh, we've got a great team together. Thank you. Nate, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Uh, good evening, um, Ms. Lightman. Adam, thank you. Um, I'm Nate Cabral Curtis. I work with Howard Stein Hudson. I'm the head of our public involvement practice. Um, as Donnie said, I work with uh, him on a number of projects, including Four River, uh, Casey Arbor Way, um, some of DOT's um, top flight jobs, and I'm very happy to be here in Arlington. I've uh, done some leafleting uh, with you guys. Adam helped to arrange that. Um, have had a nice reception from the community thus far, and we're looking forward to the public information meeting. So thank you for having us here. Thank you very much. I um, I really appreciate um, you coming out tonight. I know, um, I think it really goes to show your dedication to making sure this project goes smoothly. And um, being here this weekend, next week is no easy task. I know you're all quite busy, so it, it does mean a lot to us. Um, do we have any comments from the board? Mr. Dunn. Yeah, uh, I really do. I just want to echo that I really appreciate you all coming in to talk to us tonight. This, um, we've worked in town long and hard on getting this progress started, as you well know, because we worked with state and federal, uh, the DOT in particular, to, to get this here. Um, so I, I'm really excited to, that the project is underway, and I really appreciate uh, the effort that you're putting in, and I, I look forward to when it's done. <laughs> Ms. Mahoney. Comment and three questions. Um, and if I'm asking the wrong um, individual, did some of the questions I think I partly know the answer. Um, in, in terms of this project initially, I was not supportive of it with its initial uh, proposal, but then there was a compromise as well as uh, commitment now by the current town manager in Mass DOT to do exactly what we're doing here tonight, you know, the public outreach to the businesses and residents. Um, so in, just in case you're wondering, you know, originally I was not in support of and why I have of, changed. Of, of, of the design? The way, ba way back original. Okay. I'm in support of the design okay. right now. 
Okay. Which was a compromise from way back when, four okay. or five years ago. I have three just to sort of ask you, and if you, n neither of you three gentlemen are appropriate, I can just follow up, and I have had conversations um, with the town manager. Um, one of the questions centers around Mass DOT recently did a project in concert with the town on Forest Street, which was projected 13 to 15 months, and it took close to four years. I know in this current contract that we received, it said upon commencement of awarding of the successful bid, which I believe is J.R. Lynch, J.P. Lynch. 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 I apologize for not saying that right, that um, the uh, job is bid out at 610 days. My first question would be, is the clock or when will the <coughs> clock start ticking, as well as are there any incentives and or penalties in terms of barring extenuating circumstances, you know, DEP had to get involved. I'm, I'm trying not to recreate what happened up on Forest Street. Are any of you three gentlemen the appropriate person to ask? Well, I can speak. I'm not familiar with Forest Street. If you're prepared, Chuck, you're from the district. Uh, I've not been actively involved in Forest Street other than I am aware that it's taken longer than it was originally estimated. Uh, the project itself doesn't have, have incentive or disincentive penalties associated with it. Uh, if it is 610 days as issued from the notice to proceed. Uh, we're looking at finishing up. I don't have the exact date, Greg. April 20, 15. Uh, April, 20, April 20th, 2016. <laughs> um, so I guess I would just leave on the table, and maybe you came in the tail end of Forest Street. Um, and I'm not saying I'm going to be out there on day 611 or 815 <laughs> or anything like that, but where we went from Forest Street a 13 to 15 month to almost five years, just to put it, because I see some new players here, just that that's a concern, um, and I know it's something you're already concerned about. Um, the second question I have uh, is Mass DOT, some of the businesses may ask you this, you may have already anticipated in your PowerPoint presentation. The town has a streetscape program, it's a very small program. Um, the Department of Community Planning through Carol Kowalski and Ted Fields has been going out to East Arlington businesses. I'm wondering if Mass DOT has anything similar to that, or no, that's beyond your scope? Uh, I don't know what it's It's basically about. businesses want to take advantage of, you're in there and they want to upgrade, redesign. I think what our program is more um, aesthetics in terms of who's select, who's so you, neck length. Yeah, store for, uh, storefront improvement, is yes. that the program you're talking about? Yes, so I'm just wondering, is there anything that Mass DOT or the contractor, is there any, some, any kind of programs out there um, that can be offered to businesses? And if there's not, that's fine. That, I just want to be clear that, that, that Mass DOT partners up with private business to improve their property? Yeah, or, or, the, or the streetscape in front of it. Or oh, the streetscape in front, or is I can certainly get you an answer on that tomorrow. Yeah. I, I'm not aware. I, I mean, I can speak to a lot of things in planning. I'm sure you folks are familiar with safe routes to school. And, right. and, and then one of the things I just thought of as you was, is this an adopter program, an adopt an island, adopt a roadway? But this is more, um, this concept. I gather is much more in tune to a, a, an individual business being upgraded through a partnership with DOT. Am I yeah, correct, Adam? Yeah. Right. Okay, I can get you a response. There might be on some, that. I'm just I seeing if there's know. anything through the state, sort of a grant opportunity or something like yeah. that. And I'm not, not looking for something for free. Yes, that is currently administered. Yeah. Okay. But I can certainly look in uh, into other my colleagues and the other secretariats. I don't know if, in fact, that would be under Secretary Belecki's committee or other folks and so on and so forth. A ma you know, mass works stuff like that, so I can certainly get your response yeah, on that. Yeah, I can follow up with that. Okay, and then my last would be, again, coming off of, I mean, we did Summer Street with Mass DOT, it, it was fantastic. <coughs> Forest Street, so I've seen both sides of the coin. My question would be, and I know you anticipated this for the public meeting, similar to Forest Street where we had some bumps in the road, I won't say the contractor, but it started with an M, um, that, you know who I'm talking about, but anyways, um, no, you don't know who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. I'll t let you gentlemen know afterwards. But there was some uh, property damage that took, you know, close to two years, even with that uh, contractor agreeing that his workers did go in and do that. And what some of the businesses especially, and there are some residents down there, that if there is some sort of unfortunate um, activity that does do something unplanned and causes any kind of property damage, where Forest Street really wasn't the best case scenario, I'd like to know any of you gentlemen, the appropriate uh, uh, authorities to answer that? Where, where do I tell those business people besides contacting the town manager and anyone else he does? That would be me as far as a claim or, or, or issue. You just bring that to my attention. 
Well, I'm just getting to the point when, when they filed the claim and if they, if it's the same situation as we had on Forest Street, we needed someone from MassDOT, which we did get along with our, our DPW director to sort of, even though it wasn't your umbrella or your hat, we really needed you to sort of, you know, send the message and make sure, mediate, so to speak. So my understanding is the contractor within the construction inadvertently caused damage to a, a property. And what was the experience on Forest Street? Um, there were f six or seven properties, um, and they were mocked out. A couple of them had heated driveways that just, no, one of them had a heated driveway that got taken up, and, and the rest were just, and it, you know, everybody agreed. It, it came in under the bond or the in liability insurance yeah. waiver, and there was agreement by the uh, contractor, but two, a, a good two years went by, and we did have to ask Mass DOT in the town of Arlington, which really doesn't have purview over that, but yeah. where that contractor does w probably want to continue to do business with Mass DOT, that's the reason. I'd, I prefer we don't get to that point, but if we get to that point in Ma East yeah. Arlington. I would only suggest that if anything that occurs, you just bring it to our attention as soon as possible. I mean, it's construction, those things, you know, wouldn't, it's, they're not isolated. So they for have, me, I mean, what I would do is, is contact the town manager. Since yeah. and we can, that this yeah. is really yeah. Mass DOT working in concert with the manager. I think that makes correct? sense. I think so that I, mean, I, I that just want to put it on your yeah. radar. I'm yeah. not saying yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. But As we all understand, it's a, it's, a, it's a town design, but it's, it's a mass dot project, and, and, and certainly we advertise and award the contract, and so we oversee that contract in, in, in partnership with the town. So I don't know if you want to speak to your experience with that type sure. of stuff. Uh, so. My name's Greg Oswood. I'll be the project manager for J.H. Lynch. And typical day, I will get claims on projects we do with property damage, and we handle that in-house with our own insurance. Um, and we've fixed many things that, you know, we have broken, and we take responsibility for those things. We've already gone out and done a pre-construction video of the project. We've walked up and down. Just to document on record, if, if you'd like a copy of the video, I'd be happy to, to give you one, and um, you make it accessible to anyone that would like to view it if they don't think their property was portrayed or they have a, a crack in a fence or a wall or something that, you know, we really want to not cause any problems and get in and get out. And um, we come up from a family-run contracting organization, and this project is looked upon in our company as, as a great project and a great opportunity to showcase what we're about and paying attention to the needs of the people and the businesses. Um, we did a project in downtown Westfield about $14 million, same thing, downtown business districts, worked around the businesses and beautifying that we took their town common out for two years. And no one's happy with that, but we were able to restore it and get it back on time. So that's our goal here, and I'm available, as well as the team, if any issues come up. Well, if it's not too uh, cumbersome, if you could provide that um, sure. to Mrs. Kropelka, and I see everybody else is already doing it, as long as we all, yeah. Mrs. Kropelka has one of your cards. But again, I'll, I'll work through the town manager. Thank sure. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out, oh, Mr. Kerr. Yeah, thank you. Oh, actually, oh, one more. Uh, no, not me. Are you on stage? No, th 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 uh, thank you very much for uh, coming out. To, this is kind of the pregame show, and next week is the uh, the big uh, kickoff. I'm glad to see you have your public involvement folks here. I'm glad to see the project manager here, too, because you're going to be very vital um, to, to this. I mean, we'll have, as you all know, this project's had a lot of controversy. But this, this board is, is really, we're on record, is really being supportive of the end goals of this. But I don't think any of us are fooling ourselves about, you know, some of the, um, the difficulties and inconveniences that are going to be experienced as we go forward in this, this next, uh, these next two years. Um, it's going to be very important to keep residents up to date with what kind of inconveniences they can see. But even more so, I'm glad that project manager, uh, that, that you mentioned this, the, the uh, need for business continuity is is absolutely vital you know if small business if it gets knocked out of, out of commission even for a week that can be you know a matter of life or death uh, for them so so working closely with those small businesses is important I think you'll find a lot of positive energy down in um, uh, East Arlington if you haven't already that the Capitol Square business group is already brainstorming very actively on how to really look at this as a transformational project and harness kind of the positive energy, but we're going to really uh, rely on, on um, very clear lines of communication and uh, where people can go to escalate uh, problems, because we know that if that's not there, it'll be our phones that'll be ringing, and uh, 
So we, we take that very seriously, and we, we're looking forward to this with a lot of uh, hope. Thank you. Great. Any further questions? Well, thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to mention that we anticipate, you know, sending out, uh, if not tomorrow, by the close of business, then on Wednesday, a, a bulletin to all the stakeholder groups and uh, the list that we've been able to, um, you know, compile thus far. Um, like I said, there's a, there's a draft PowerPoint going around. We're going to do a, a, a press release um, on Friday in anticipation to the advocate and, and, and into the other local papers, so on and so forth. So um, I'm sure, Adam, you'll post that on the, on the web page. Of course. We, you know, we do a lot, with, there's a lot of jobs going on. I mean, there were 30, the Arlington Mass Ave project we're speaking of now is one of 38 notice of proceeds that went out on the same day because of the evolution of the transportation bond bill, so on and so forth. So we like to see a full room. You know, there's nothing like, you know, the worst thing is driving to a meeting on, a, on what will be an invasive, you know, road project and, and having, you know, driving to a Springfield or a Plymouth or wherever, you know, and having seven people. I mean, so let me just urge as many people to get there. We'll, we'll answer any questions. We, we anticipate follow-up meetings, whether they're in small groups or business groups, so on and so forth, that we'll, we'll certainly willing to have that conversation. Um, we've fielded one inquiry so far on a restaurant, and we got a satisfactory answer, and in the, in, in the, uh, the owner was happy. So um, we're batting 1,000, and we'll just you know, we'll go from there. You know, no, nowhere to go but down, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think you have to worry about uh, a packed house next week. <laughs> <laughs> I have a qu just one question. Okay. Yes. Is the project at all um, vulnerable to the negotiations in Washington right now over the transportation bond? No, it's, no, it's not. It's a fully funded project. Fully funded. Eighty percent federal, twenty percent. Right. Thank you. Th thank you very much, guys, and we'll uh, see you next week. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Moving on, for approval, uh, number four, consent agenda, meeting of minutes, May 19th, 2014. Request, contractor drain layer license, Re uh, Bond Brothers, Inc. Request, contractor drain layer license, J.H. Lynch and Sons. Request, contractor drain layer license, Charles Contracting Co. Request, one day beer and wine license, for 6-2014 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium for ACMI Annual Event and Awards Night. Request one day beer and wine license, 6-17-14 at Kickstand Cafe for Arlington Center for the Arts Private Fundraiser. A vote, use of Jefferson Cutter House Lawn or Library Story Walks. Vote, sale of wine at Farmer's Market 2014 applicant. Reappointments as well? Yeah. Um, that's next. That's separate. Oh, no, that's. Yep. Oh, that is. That is included. Huh? Sorry. Oh, gosh. Um, and reappointments Board of Library Trustees, Catherine Fennelly. Board of Youth Services, Lauren Boyle, Gina Murphy, Malaki Shaw Jones. Building Maintenance Committee, Vincent Sabroni. Cemetery Commission, Gloria Turkle. Open Space Committee, Joey Glusko. Parks and Recreations Committee, James Roblard. Personnel Board, Cynthia Gallagher. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second with one possible housekeeping. Um, I didn't, it's a very small thing, but I wanted to make sure it's something um, that I can annotate or amend on um, 4-H, which is the application for the Farmer's Market Farmer Winery. It's, it's really just a small thing, but um, where they have the date and times of the event, is there any way just for my sake under two event information where it says Wednesdays 2 to 6.30 p.m., can we just administratively just have to 2 put p.m., so it's 2 p.m. to 6.30 p.m.? Can I, is that okay? Can I do that, Attorney Hein? Yeah, yes. Just, I mean, I know we're not using military time, but all the yes. other applications always say 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. just so we're in concert with that. And I, I don't mean to be picky on that. It's just. Well, that's the understanding of, of the Board of Selectmen's office. I think that's fine. Okay. Thank, so just that um, amendment. Great. Thank you. Uh, yes, Marie. Yeah, no, we're going to have uh, a point. Um, do we have any further discussion of the board? 
Um, any discussion from the crowd? <coughs> Excuse me. No further discussion. We, um, Carol, you don't want to come up and advertise? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chairman. It's quite just, all right. Just quickly, we're here on behalf of the Arlington Center for the Arts. I'm Carol Band from Bartlett Avenue. I'm a member of the Board of Directors, and this is Linda Shoemaker, who's our new Executive Director. And every year, the Arlington Center for the Arts sponsors Shakespeare in the Park. And to do it, it costs a little bit of money. And this year we're having our annual fundraiser at the Kickstand Cafe. Thank you to the folks at the Kickstand Cafe. They're going to close an hour early so that we can get in there and have a little, little bash. We're going to have. Len, maybe you want to talk about it a little bit. Um, what's going to happen? Okay, so so I know we don't have a lot of time, but no. just so you know, we're just going to have a gathering of supporters of Shakespeare in the Park. There's two performances this summer, and um, we're going to have some special guests. And um, I hope. Uh, maybe we can extend an invitation to all these folks to come. Um, this is the 14th year that we've had Shakespeare in the Park in Arlington, and the Art Center is committed to making it a free uh, public art event for the community, and that's why the need for the fundraiser, and thanks so much for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Carol, congratulations on your TIP certification. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, she took the test. <laughs> or at any event, I'm available. <laughs> she passed on her first attempt, so I think that's something you know. <laughs> We, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? For nothing. Um, <laughs> moving on, we have um, reappointments to the Transportation Advisory Committee. And um, these appointments are, um, you know, they're kind of administrative, I guess, to um, bring the current TAC members, um, to bring their terms and align them with their committee's charter. And so for that, we have uh, Scott Smith, whose term to expire on 12-13-2015. Uh, Jeff uh, Matixis. Matuxis. Next. Uh, uh, Jeff, <laughs> sorry. Uh, term to expire 12-31-2016. Howard News and Rich Turcott with their terms to expire on 12-31-2018. Move approval. Second. Would anyone like to discuss this further? Any comments from the crowd? No, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Or nothing. Moving on, appointment, Arlington Preservation Fund. Mr. Gilligan. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Good evening. Yep. My understanding is you've received a nomination mm -hmm. for an appointment for myself to serve as the finance officer on the Arlington Preservation Fund. Uh, as you all know, the Arlington Preservation Fund is a 501c3 corporation under the IRS rules. Uh, part of its uh, charter and corporation, articles of corporation, uh, require the board of selectmen to have certain appointing authority to certain representatives on that board of directors. Uh, my understanding is you received a letter from Mr. John Warden uh, relative to that nomination. The finance officer that was currently serving has stepped down and moved out of town. I was asked if I'd be interested, and I said I would serve at the pleasure of that board and this board. <laughs> well, we, we certainly appreciate that, Mr. Gilligan. Mr. Dunn. Uh, move approval, and thank you very much, Mr. Gilligan, for helping us in this. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing that. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I thank the board for its time and its consideration. Thank you. <laughs> thank and you. And for anyone who is not aware, the Arlington Preservation Fund uh, provides loans to property owners of historically significant properties. And they can go online and, and check that whole thing out. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Moving on, appointment to Transportation Advisory Committee, Mr. John Hurd. And Hey, John. Good evening. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. My name's John Hurd. I live in Precinct 18. Sorry, I just moved. I am a local business owner, lifelong Arlington resident. I live there with my wife, who also is an Arlington resident. 
And I thought when, uh, when I joined the Chamber of Commerce, a spot opened up. Paul Kent preceded me as the Chamber of Commerce rent uh, representative on the TAC. So when they opened up the spot, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me. My office, I'm an attorney. Uh, my office is right in the center, right in the heart of some of the, uh, the main TAC projects. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to get involved and uh, represent the Chamber of Commerce. Move approval. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. I was curious. Uh, so I, I know. Have you been to any TAC meetings? Have you had? The, have you worked with I have, them before? I've been to okay. four yeah. TAC meetings. Nice. I wasn't told that I needed approval. So. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it in that, con <laughs> that wasn't the context that I meant. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. uh, I so uh, we as a board rely really heavily on TAC uh, yep. because there are some really detailed and dip and. Uh, like they require a lot of t technical attention and technical detail that's difficult for us to do, frankly, in front of a camera. And so it's really, I re we really rely on the TAC and I really appreciate um, you joining them and I really appreciate the work that they do. Thank you. I'm still getting used to the transportation lingo. So <laughs> I'm a layman on the TAC board right now, but I'm learning every day. Yeah. I'm sure you'll pick it up quick. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thank you. We had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? For nothing. Thanks. Thank you. Public hearing, 7.15, well, it is I long one. past that. <laughs> so um, moving on, uh, we have a Verizon petition for Massachusetts Avenue, Scott Burns, right-of-way agent. Does not appear that Mr. Burns is with us tonight. Um, Move to table. Second. We have a motion table and a second. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. Uh, uh, um, sorry. You will wait on that, Dan? I'll wait. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, Mr. Brown. Uh, so I will fo follow up with Mr. Burns. Uh, seeing Verizon on the agenda, uh, we've been, the utility poll working group has been exchanging some emails about uh, our lists and the, of like the poll status and the difficulties we're having in getting the poll status database updated. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to reach out, I think, to Mr. Burns beforehand and give him a uh, advance warning that I intend to quiz him about that database uh, when we actually do hear that. So you didn't scare him away tonight, just next time. I have, yeah, if, only if he's a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> um, so number eight will be postponed. Moving on, license and permits. Uh, requests, <coughs> common victual license. Um, Pizza Mia, formerly Bill's House of Pizza, 1345 Mass Ave. Mr. Pasha. Come on up to the microphone, please. I wasn't prepared for the speech. Right? Uh, no, <laughs> please, just uh, tell us a little okay. bit about yourself and yeah, uh, your okay. plans for the restaurant. My name is Ramko Pasha. It's hard to say to call me Z. <laughs> I bought the Bill's House of Pizza uh, a month and a half ago. Uh, it's a look like it's a nice place with a nice spot. I reckon it's a beautiful town. I have uh, some background. I worked in a pizza place like till since 2001. So a lot of uh, background behind my back. I have a friends. They can help me. Uh, I hope uh, I can. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be a pizza, some some European food, some um, Mediterranean wraps. I'll try something different, but it's gonna be mostly pizza. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Uh, move approval subject to all conditions and I just want to thank you for choosing Arlington and good luck we're definitely glad that you're here thank you very much I got a question though I heard that they're starting a big project on a Mass Avenue are they starting from Cambridge up or from Lexington down <laughs> because yeah. I'm on a Lexington won't touch it. <laughs> if you, they start you tomorrow, don't have to worry about that me. <laughs> other end yeah oh. uh, other end of town from Cambridge yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't go as far as Lexington. I have two years. <laughs> the, 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 project, the project's only in East Arlington. It doesn't go. It doesn't oh, it doesn't go uh, up the center. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you don't go anywhere yet. No, <laughs> yeah. I'll second your motion. Um, further questions? Um, are you planning to do delivery also? Yeah, yeah. You we'll do delivery. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and just on that, maybe in future applications, we can just put that as an option: delivery, yes, no. Just um, and the only uh, project planned for 
Arlington Heights is not a construction project. One of our residents of the town who works in Lexington with the Lexpress program, which is Lexington's bus service, mm -hmm. they're now doing, I believe it's on their Route 6, the, this Board of Selectmen voted for it, and the um, Lexington Board of Selectmen, I believe, on May 9th, that starting in June, one of the buses, they go all throughout Lexington. It's free to the residents. There aren't any bus stops. You flag them down. They yeah. will be coming through Arlington Heights. Yeah. It's bringing yeah. Lexington right. So that's the only project. I mean, I, I don't and think that'll that's be a good thing. reflect the businesses. So yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's a like good thing for you. That's more people to uh, buy. Calls and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number 10. Requests. Common Victor license. Um, Andre Stepanian for Z Zatar. Great. Hi. Hi. Hey, my name is Andre Stepanian, and I'm taking over the Lukumaki Bakery in 916 Mass Avenue. And I will do it, uh, the same bakery, but with the uh, Armenian traditions salted pastries like cheese and the mini pizzas and like this. This is my project. Questions from the board. Move approval subject to all conditions. And uh, again, thank you for choosing Arlington. Really good luck. It's a good location. Thank you, thank you so uh, much. I'll stop by on my way to Blue Ribbon. You're most welcome. <laughs> You're most welcome. And uh, I, I want to congratulate you on your new job, your new venture. Thank um, you. I do see that. Um, you listed information rele relevant to um, your ownership in this, that you are taking the serve safe class if yes. you haven't done that already. And if there's anything else, um, maybe through the Board of Health, but I think they would have mentioned something in here and they haven't. So you, you've gone out and done the appropriate yes. steps to get yourself adequately trained, as well as you cited that you've been mentoring, working with the previous owner, yep. uh, or Pi Baker. I don't mean to say Pi Baker, but yep. um, so uh, I commend you for doing that, and I really, truly wish you all great success. Thank you so much. I, I'd just like to echo Ms. Mahan's comments that um, I, I do appreciate that you've been working with the previous owner. I know this is a, uh, a big step for you, and um, we do appreciate you, uh, you know, following through with a, uh, a fine bakery in Arlington. Thank you. Um, do we have a do we have a second? I'll, s I'll second it. Great. And um, I'm just happy to see that I can come by. It was it Lac Marjan? Yeah, no. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. So well, nothing. Vote. Best of luck. Thank you so Thank much. You. Moving on. Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Do we have anyone here for citizens open forum? Seeing none, moving on. Traffic rules and orders, other business. 12, update from the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. Angela. And I see that we'll be taking two votes, so if um, we could talk to the first one and then I will take a vote and then talk to the second. Okay, well, so yeah, we'll start with Arlington Alive and I'm gonna ask um, committee member Tom Davison to speak on that. Thank you. Good evening. Hey. Hi, good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Hello. Hello. Uh, so the Arlington Alive Summer Arts Black Party, thanks for taking the time to discuss this. This is the second year that we're doing this event. Uh, last year's event was a very big success. Uh, it really drew attention to the cultural economy of Arlington and our vibrant business community. We had over 1,500 people attend from the greater Boston area. Uh, we got good press in the Boston Globe. We got other good uh, pickup. So we're looking to build on that success this year. Um, there are a couple of items that we would like to ask the Board of Selectmen to give us approval for. Um, we did submit a, a memo with those, those details of what, what was, um, we're asking to be um, approved, so that would be required to have this, this event occur. Uh, partial closure of Broadway and Alton Street to have the event happen on Broadway. Um, we did this last year. We really kind of 
took the machete and cut our way through all of the details to make this occur. So we're really uh, doing the same event again this year with the same types of approvals. I think the only wrinkle this year is because of the um, firehouse renovation that when we get to the day of the event, which is Saturday, July 12th, in advance of that, we'll see what the actual layout is on, on the uh, use of Broadway. But we are planning to be proactive about that and limit our uh, access on the street down to stop prior to getting to, to the firehouse. And we're in negotiations with our friends at Ameri um, American Alarm to use their front parking lot as an alternate space. Great. Questions from the board? Yes. And if you touched on this, I apologize. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a little hot of hearing in my left ear. Sure. Um, I just want to follow up on um, the temporary bus stop. Do, do you have all the arrangements for that? It says in there that you're requesting advice regarding any arrangement with, with the MBTA. Has that already been resolved, or is that still a request? We'd be doing the same as we did last year. I believe the, I'm not sure if it was either the police department or the DPW that took care of that. And we had a space that was arranged just on the other side of Mass Ave. There were two parking spaces where the monument is, the monument park that was cordoned off for the temporary bus stop. Okay. And uh, th the hanging of the banners, similar to last year. And then um, last year, did we waive the uh, central parking fees at the Russell? Yes, we did ask for that, too, for, for two purposes. One, because we're taking all the parking s uh, spaces at Broadway Plaza for the day. Um, it did cause some concern for some of the local business owners. We wanted to resolve that by offering free parking and also as a uh, attraction for people from the greater Boston area to be able to come and attend the event and have a free parking al alternate. And I did see it. I'm just doing a lot of this for anybody paying attention at home. Um, you did employ a police detail last year, and do you plan on we doing did. that again this year? Because it seemed to work out well. Absolutely, yes. We had one police detail that worked very well, uh, managed the flow of traffic. We'd like to do the same thing again this year. Okay. And I'll look for all the write-ups about this event in the future, like you had last year. Great. Thank you very, very much. Sure, thank you. Um, so I'd like to move approval, if I can. Of course. Um, I, second. We have a second. Um, one thing I, I do want to note before is um, a follow-up to the parking in the lot. I, um, I hope that people will get quite used to that and um, <laughs> continue to park in that lot when they visit the center. <laughs> um, any further discussion from the board? No, any from the public? Seeing none. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, moving on for approval, the visitor information booth. Angela. Um, so if, if you haven't noticed, but you probably have, the visitor booth is up. Um, and we're working on getting it finished right now. Um, and we want to thank the town, thank Adam, and, um, and also um, Mike Rademacher for helping um, get the, the last pieces done so that we can open it. So we wanted to bring to this plan to you, so this is where we're getting ready um, to open it. One of the components in here is that since it is gonna take a little while to do the rest of the work, we'd like permission to be able to put our tent on the lawn like we did last year. Um, just to, you know, if, we, if it takes a while to get everything else done. Um, and then we also have, you've had the chance to read through it, some plans on um, how to raise some funds, and we'd like to use the performance terrace. So I don't know if you have specific questions or you want me to review the plan. Um, it might be easier if we just ask questions. I think we've all been had the opportunity to read the plan. Okay. Um, Mr. Kira? Yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit of context because I was as a liaison to A-TED. A um, I know that um, Angela and Ted Palusa is standing with her, and he's been really a driving force on, on, on seeing this, this booth to fruition. Um, I, I think just to expand, the, there are some ADA issues that have to be worked out on the, um, the booth, but rather than losing a, a significant part of the, the summer, I think the thought is to be able to put up the tent, as has been done uh, in the past. And I know that last week a number of ATED representatives were down at the booth with the manager and with Mr. Rademarca just looking through some of the last um, things that have to be done for the lighting in, inside and, and um, some of the, the ramp layouts and making some of those decisions. But, um, you know, just talking to some of the merchants, they're very excited. They've been asking when this will be up and running, and, and uh, I think they understand that if we give this approval that there will be an interim uh, operational uh, plan that will allow us to start some of the activities and initially store uh, materials 
in, in the boot and then operate directly out of it as soon as that uh, additional uh, carpentry and utility work is done. Mr. Chapman, do you have, want to speak to that, your recent visit? Uh, uh, yeah, j just that the, the work that the committee done is, is impressive. The, the booth is in place. I think it's a good spot. Uh, and I'm glad uh, it was at the suggestion of Selectman Cura that we pulled that meeting together to make sure that we were all on the same page. And I felt that after the meeting, we were in good position. We'd be able to get the electricity run. Um, again, as Selectman Cura mentioned, uh, the last bigger detail is uh, making sure that we adequately make the visitor's booth ADA accessible. But I think we're on the right track, and we, uh, I, I don't have a definitive timeline today, but we should have something in that, uh, in that realm shortly. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Dunn. Uh, my only question was about the sponsorships. Can you t uh, can you tell me a little bit more about like how that would what would what would a sponsor get? Um, well, what we're looking at when we're coming up with we we'll have to come up with a schedule um, for the price, but we would be able to. They might be able to use the performance terrace. Um, it might be promotional material on site and also provide some volunteers. So we don't have. We're just in a you know, discussion phase for right now for what we want to do for that. But, um, you know, we were, we were asked when we went for the money for this to try to raise some funds our, on our own. And so this is what we thought would be a good way to do it. If I could, could expand on that, just, just having been involved in these discussions. One thing that we've discussed within uh, ATED potentially is as a sponsor, you know, could get rights for a day. So, Today's operation of the booth is brought to you by XYZ, mm -hmm. maybe a small placard okay. at the counter or something like that. That's one idea okay. of uh, the way that that could work. We've also talked about making that possible also through uh, to um, open to nonprofit organizations as well. Um, if they wanted to come in and provide some staffing for a day, this is brought to you by such and such an organization as well if they wanted to provide volunteers. So I think when we talk in terms of sponsorship, it's not strictly monetary it's it's also volunteer assistance so I, I definitely like that I, I like them what you're trying to do and it sounds like I like the way you they like these ideas are doing um, it's definitely one that if we let it if it went too far it could I could see where it'd be um, it would become a really like a tacky problem I think but it yeah. sounds like you're totally on the right place so it sounds good okay Ms. Bond sort of a similar venue, but more p perhaps a process or a procedural question. I know the initial um, approval from town meeting for $25,000 was to ATED to be overseen by the town manager. Um, talking about sponsorships and some of the revenue generating ideas, when you all are wildly successful on that end, um, I know you cite um, continuing to work with the comptroller, but I think that's more around uh, statistical tracking. Um, I guess I would ask through the chair, um, hopefully when this is really successful, who's going to oversee? I know who's overseeing the initial 25,000, but where does it go from there? At, at, the, at the moment, I think it's gonna go into the general fund, because mm -hmm. we don't have a revolving fund for this. Right. So, you know, for the time being, we'll do that. We're gonna have to probably talk to the finance committee uh, in the town. I, I would wanna <laughs> confirm this actually with the comptroller, but I'd be pretty certain that any donations or gifts made uh, to ATED for the operation of this booth. Could go into a special okay. gift and donation okay. account uh, mm -hmm. that could be spent at, at the authority of the committee. Okay, I, I okay. only raise that because I didn't remember in my memory that we, because we didn't do a revolving fund yeah. for the visitor center. And I'm not saying that the uh, suggestion you have isn't the one that should be done from na here and now on in, but I just wanted to make sure in terms of that money in that um, that's been tied up. and it, it, uh, t tied up neatly in a bow. Mm -hmm. I would just note that the mechanism that the manager outlines is the same mechanism that's used now for um, sponsorships for the block party as, as well. And I see Mr. Chaput is there. He kind of serves as the treasurer on ATED and kind of liaises with the uh, comptroller's office on our behalf. I don't know. Mr. Hunt. I just want to echo what the town manager said. There, there is a number of means by which we can set up the appropriate types of accounts for, this type of do for that type of donation. Thank you. Okay. And, and the only other thing I wanted to applaud is that um, besides, as my colleague Mr. Kiro Joe cited, that um, you're taking the extra steps to make ADA compliance um, happen over there. Um, I'm particularly impressed with your outreach with our two high schools, Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic, as well as um, the Council on Aging. Um, I think that's a really good marriage of, you know, covers all the spectrums there. And uh, 
I really think you'll get it. Anything on the Arlington High End, you can certainly let Mr. Kiro know. He's sort of our in over there on the school side. <laughs> and he's also on the committee, so I won't volunteer to help on that. But I did want to say I think that's a very good idea to, to reach out to those two different groups. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to answer, Ms. Martin, to answer your question about where do we go here on the money guy. So um, the, we, do, we do have some funds in the ATED account. And so if we see some activity related to the visitor center but not directly in terms of construction and we use up all the $25,000, well, there will be some money in there in our account. In fact, we've already done that in a couple of cases for some rel relatively minor uh, expenses. We, it was just easier to get them paid. And I work with the controller and it works out very well. Secondly, um, just to uh, pique your interest, because I didn't see it in the report, uh, there are a couple of items that we want to have in the visitor center and we'll have to watch our money. One of them is a bike rack. And so given that it's next to the bikeway, and folks will be coming down from Lexington or coming up from Cambridge. We felt that this is an ideal spot for that water break. And so we're looking right now for uh, maybe a 10 spot bicycle rack to go there. And we're working with Mike Rademacher. I think we'll probably have opportunity to get one of those relatively soon. Not immediately, but certainly one of the things that we definitely think would be necessary at the visitor center. And finally, um, again, to pique your interest, Ted has done a really nice job of working with somebody to create a four and a half minute video about thing, places to see in the town. And it's on a rolling arrangement. So it goes up on a TV, one of those smart TVs, you know, that's on the wall. And you turn it on in a place and it just keeps playing. So as people come in, they can, four and a half minutes is about all you can handle, which is great. <laughs> and it, we think it's gonna work very well. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Anyone in the crowd? Yes. I was just do we need to, is there a vote to, for us to take on the second one? It from says for approval. So. Is yeah. it maybe, maybe just a, a vote of support? Um, I think, well, I think uh, we, we can vote um, to, I think we're looking to support the operational plan um, to uh, permit the temporary placement of, of, of the tent on that property uh, by the, the visitor booth pending uh, final renovations, and also to permit um, uh, some public you know, performances on the terrace um, during the operation of the, of the visitor center. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Moving on. Request sidewalk on Clyde Terrace, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I've provided the, the board with uh, both a cover memo and an email that I received from a town resident, uh, which expresses concerns about pedestrian safety on Clyde Terrace and asks the town to consider either the construction of a sidewalk or the implementation of some other pedestrian accommodations uh, on Clyde Terrace, uh, on, excuse me, on Clyde Terrace. So uh, in Follow up to the email, I had a conversation with this resident and explained that in terms of funding, uh, on an annual basis, uh, the town doesn't have adequate annual funding to maintain either its roadways or current sidewalk inventory. Uh, so it would be fiscally imprudent to expand our sidewalk inventory. Um, <clears throat> through the conversation, uh, that resident did express to me uh, concern with that and concern still with, with safety um, on Clyde Terrace. Uh, so I asked if there was other, any other avenue that could be uh, taken in regards to addressing this. So coming out of that conversation, I did tell her that I could put this before the Board of Selectmen and ask if they would consider referring the matter to the Transportation Advisory Committee or TAC uh, for analysis. So uh, this before you tonight is in follow up to that conversation to ask the Board uh, to refer this matter to TAC for their review and analysis. Move to refer to TAC. Second. I, um, I just have a couple Please. quick comments. Um, thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Um, so uh, throughout the week, um, Adam and I did go back and forth on this a little bit. Um, I, at first, I, I didn't know if it was actually in the scope attack, um, seeing that it was a 
um, you know, sidewalk improvement, and we, we do send mostly um, road issues to them. But um, af after our conversation, I did feel comfortable that, you know, just general safety improvements um, should go before them, and they would um, provide the best recommendation that we could uh, possibly use for this. And um, so I am comfortable sending it to TAC. Did you have a chance to run this by one of the TAC chairs to know, to tell them that you were talking about this? No, I did not actually. So um, one of the things that I did last year on advice of communication with TAC is I started giving them previews of stuff mm -hmm. and gave them an opportunity to signal whether or not they were interested. Um, so I will support this motion, but I just want to encourage uh, you, in f like in future TAC issues, uh, just shoot them an email and you generally get a response within a day or two that they'll tell you you know, yes or no about that. It's just because um, we give them so much and uh, I, I like being, I like letting them filter a little bit. Duly noted. Thanks. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Moving on. We have a, a vote for the Board of Selectmen to um, partner with the Arlington Elder Abuse Task Force um, for um, Ms. Crimmins, um, who cannot be here tonight, but uh, this is, uh, this vote is just to um, state that this board supports the work that the Arlington Elder Abuse Task Force does, and uh, they really are vital, um, they're really a vital part of our community, and they do some tremendous work, and I'm happy to uh, sign on as co-sponsor, and I hope you'll join me. So moved. Second. We have uh, any further discussion? Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Four nothing vote. Moving on, and thank you for bearing with us. Um, vote on the Lake Street Signs uh, Transportation Advisory Committee report. Um, so the Transportation Advisory Committee has recommended um, no action on changing the signs down on Lake Street to allow for residents to turn um, in, um, off Lake Street at designated times. And I do believe that we have some neighbors that might want to comment on this. Please come forward. Good evening, my name is Leslie Bennett and I was the person who originally authored the warrant article um, relating to the Lake Street signs. Um, I provided a response to the tax recommendation. Unfortunately, I just got the notice on Saturday, so I wasn't able to get it to you earlier than today, but the office was very helpful and said that they would make a copy. If anyone hasn't had a chance to read that, I'm happy to read it now so that I can describe a little bit more fully the um, you know, perspective from those of us who have observed this process over the last several months. Uh, if you just want to hit on some main points, I think. Okay. Well, um, at the first hearing in March, the Board of Selectmen voted no action on this warrant article. Um, at the April 7th hearing, it again voted no action on the warrant article with a recommendation that it go to TAC. At the April 7th hearing, there were about, um, you know, more than a half a dozen people who came up and spoke about this proposal. Um, it appeared that um, there were a lot of, there was a lot of concern first of all, about the traffic. Um, there were a lot of ideas about the traffic. Speed bumps, lower the, lower the speed limit, um, you know, think about changing the streets configuration, making Mary Street a one way, going the opposite way, turn the, you know. I mean, there were so many suggestions and recommendations that came from the public that appeared that the Board of Selectmen really just wanted to take a look at this question in a more holistic way, rather than focus on the Lake Street signs, because it's clear from, I think, most, um, you know, most who observe that area that the bike path is actually one of the biggest contributing factors to the traffic flow. 
that if there were a way to actually manage that intersection of just unfettered pedestrian crossing and you could actually keep the traffic moving, you wouldn't have people sitting there for a half an hour in rush hour traffic and residents not being able to get to their houses in a reasonable amount of time. I would like to actually refer again to the whole original reason for the signs was to avoid commuters racing down Mary Street and trying to cut through the traffic. And just simply make the point that we're not talking about commuters when we're talking about residents. I mean, the people who live there aren't going to be entering the traffic again. They're going home and getting out of the traffic. But that is, you know, that is essentially why I think that there is a difference between those two populations, people who are avoiding the traffic and people who are getting out of it, right, for good. But it was my understanding at the April 7th hearing that, you know, Selectman Dunn and Selectman Greeley were discussing the broader, bigger picture and what TAC would be doing with this referral from the board. Um, and I laid that out in the letter. I mean, I basically went back to the transcript of the hearing and it did appear that there was an interest by this body in actually asking TAC to provide it with other information and other advice. So it was very disappointing to actually see that the TAC went to Police Chief Ryan's recommendation that was issued back in March, which was one of the original reasons why the board said no action because they rested it, they rested, you rested your decision on the police chief's response. And okay, that's fine. But it was my understanding at the April 7th hearing that it, was, it had moved beyond that question, that it was no longer just a question about the signage. The signage is not going to solve the problem on Lake Street, but there are other ideas that may. And that is what I thought the TAC was charged to do, and it appears failed to do. And so my one question for this body is, what did you ask of the TAC? Did they actually respond to you appropriately? And if they did not, then what happens next? Thank you. Do you want to go first or should I? Either. Um, I, I do remember the April 7th meeting, um, and I did hear from some original residents um, who spoke to the signs, and a lot of what I heard of at that meeting were um, not so much dealing with the current signs, but people got up and spoke about maybe this street should be a one way, maybe this street should be a stop sign, maybe we should have something similar f to the traffic that's feeding in. And with the exception of the stop sign, um, which um, we'd look to the police department, we'd look to the chair through the town manager um, to, to look at that. Um, one of the things that I know I outlined, and I apologize if I didn't do it as awfully as I should have, is that to sort of follow the same model that was done years ago as well as currently in terms of, you know, everyone, who, you know, for us to come in and just make a certain street a one way, we like to get a sense from the neighborhood, from the people who actually live on there. And, and I'm not directing this just to you because you certainly have done outreach to get some neighborhood input. Um, but we were saying to those other people who came up and, you know, I'm, I'm going to misquote it. Somebody said, you know, you should make Mary a one way and make Margaret a one way, this way, that way. And one of the things I said was if the neighborhood felt that way, um, if somebody could sort of, as you have done uh, in yourself, uh, take charge of that and get a sense from the neighbors around there before everybody embarks down that path. Um, I didn't anticipate um, referring any of that to TAC. And I, um, I'm, I'm not sure in terms of, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for D Mr. Grayley or Mr. Don, Dan or Kevin. I'm just saying, you know, where I was coming from that night. And I think one of the things, I, I wouldn't necessarily, um, Officer Rateau sits on the Transportation Advisory Committee, so he kind of does wear two hats on that. And a lot of what I was reading from the police chief and Officer Rateau is that some of these issues, instead of TAC, should be going through the police department and the one and the issues that we need the neighborhood input in terms of making the street a one way, not necessarily putting a stop sign up. I think that's 
handled through the police department and they do traffic counts and accident reports and things like that. But on those other suggestions, with the exception of speed bumps, um, I don't know if I missed out on anything. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I think that uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with the tax uh, recommendation, but it's, not, it's definitely not just because of uh, this, it's because of other conversations that I have with the members of the TAC. Uh, so I think that they recognize that there is a significant problem. I, I recognize, they recognize, I think we all uh, recognize that there's a big traffic problem with Lake Street and Mass Ave. The backups that happen there are um, really problematic for the quality of life for people who live in town. And I think, and when I, um, my gut looking at this is that this problem that we're talking about with these signs is a symptom of that larger problem. And so I sent, uh, so when I voted to send this to TAC, I was sending it to them kind of to look at it and say, hey, here's the symptom, and you, I know you're already aware of the big problem. I know you're already looking at the big problem. Do you want to tackle this symptom at the same time? And I read between the lines in their memo, and the answer is no, we're, we're focused on the big problem. And so I agree that there isn't anything here about the um, bike path, but I know that they are working. That is an active project of theirs. And uh, so I, and of course, obviously, we also heard tonight that we're about, you know, we're about to rip that intersection up with the state DOT, which is going to have some temporarily painful consequences, but will hopefully improve it in the long run. And um, I know that it isn't a very, it isn't great news, but I guess my, I kind of want to watch that happen and watch it settle out and then see what we see if we can get an improvement from the bike path, get an improvement in that intersection, and maybe the problem that, that you all are experiencing will dissipate if we solve that larger problem. Uh, so I, uh, I understand your frustration, and um, if I and I, my commute does not take me down that path, and so I would, and if it did, I so you know, there, there are parts of things, you know, sometimes people come before us and I say, I feel your pain because I do the exact same thing, um, but this is one where I don't, I, um, I'm the one on the bike path, so um, I, 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 I very much sympathize with the difficulties that you're in, but I, I'm, a fr but I, I, I'm comfortable with the tax recommendation, and uh, I hope that the problem will be resolved by these other actions that we're taking in the next couple of years. Thank, thank you very much. Just um, piggybacking on what you said about TAC looking at the bike pack path, it's not just TAC. Um, you all remember at the last meeting, you had all designated me to go over to um, Lexington Department of Public Works. The three, um, Bedford, Lexington, and Arlington have been working together on a full, uh, a plan for a full overhaul of, of a number of issues around the uh, bike path, trying try to unify the way that the signage is approached. That's one, one is aspect. But a big piece of the, um, the plan that, that has been put together by the three communities concentrates on crossings and where um, there need to be better controls of crossings, where there maybe don't need to be better controls of crossings, how uh, bollards um, impact um, traffic, a lot of issues like, like that. And it impacts the entire uh, length of the bike path through the, uh, th the three um, communities. Uh, the state of that was that um, the three communities that were uh, representatives from, you know, planning and public works and uh, political representation and bike advisory committee representation uh, from the three communities looking over some of the final public comments that, that have been submitted on that plan. I know that I, I think it's this week the three um, uh, bike committees are meeting jointly again to try to now take what's what's there and try to lay out what uh, a phased approach to implementing that plan might be. Mm. We've got to be realistic. I mean, it's a large plan. It's a large path. It's a large problem. It could take some time to actually make those 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 changes. Um, it takes money to make those changes, and that has to be budgeted over a number of years. But uh, that is something else that's in the works, and that's not just on tax shoulders. That that's actually something that the three communities have been working on together. Thank you. Yes. Please. <clears throat> yes. Hi, it's Joanne Kelly Avis, and I'm on Mary Street. I just want you folks just to keep in mind for the next few years that the only through street is Lake Street. Those people who come speeding down Mary Street uh, and who are fortunate enough not to get stopped by a policeman, although my nephew's visiting, he said there was someone down there close to um, Route 2 last week. Um, but 
Mary Street is really a dead end. When they come speeding down, it's not like they can go over the bicycle path and continue, which I think Mr. Greeley was not quite clear on that. It's a dead end. So you can only go right, which is a dead end finally, into the field, um, or take a left and get onto Lake Street. And it's surprising how polite people are. They've been sitting in that line, but yet they let those people who cut through get in line. So I just want you to keep in mind when talking with TAC that Mary Street is a dead end. And so the, they shouldn't be even using Mary Street. <coughs> and the bicycle path just the other day, they don't stop. I think they put up signs. They may have put up signs, but they just think they have the right of the road. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Yes, please. I'm Jan Smola and I live on White Street in the East Arlington neighborhood. My concern of your comment, Mr. Crow, about the yeah. bike path is um, I understand that it's Lexington, Bedford, and Arlington working on the bike path right. remedy. Um, as I've traveled through those other two towns, they've taken paths to make sure you can't just blaze out of the bike path into the road like you can onto Lake Street. My concern is if it's a collective effort, which I think is good because it's all one long bike path, um, we're still going to be forced to wait until any kind of resolution comes out. And yet we as residents are sitting on Lake Street waiting to get into our own neighborhoods while the bike path is really Result, uh, holding up things. Now I know the Mass Ave work is going to take us at least another 610 days or two years. <laughs> it I'll is. round it. <laughs> I'll round it up mm -hmm. um, to be realistic. And it's going to be a nightmare on Lake Street. And there really is no other way. I can't get into my house. I could probably try to make a new road off of Route 2, but you know I don't have an aeronautic vehicle. So <laughs> just a quick comment. So I appreciate your concern, but I am very disappointed that TAC wasn't charged with what we understood from the April 7th meeting with a broader spectrum of the needs of, of the uh, business, not just signage off of Lake Street. Thank you. And, and, and could I to that, um, since Mr. Kiro is our designee as well as the town manager, I do know um, the bike path in Lexington on Bow Street, um, which is, as you come up, you go past Berman's, and then there's a little store, a convenience store, and then you take a right, that's Bow Street, right before like Boozer Liquors and a Dunkin' Donuts. They were having that similar issue, and I want to make sure everyone is clear on, we're not talking about when pedestrians are trying to cross the bike path. We're talking about bicyclists. People, I, I travel down there a lot, and you have to stop because you're gonna hit somebody. Um, and they had a similar situation up on Bow Street in Lexington, and what they did, and I, you know, I sometimes pull in that back parking lot to make phone calls, so I observed it a lot, especially on a Saturday and Sunday. They put up sort of a, a fancy fence thing. They have the bollards there, um, but they put it up so that it slows down the bike um, traffic. It, it's a natural sort of momentum for them to stop, and, and it is very busy, and, but it works very well because the residents in Lexington were having the same concerns because so many people go up and down Bow Street because it's a cut through to get to Lowell. And it's also a cut through from Lowell to get back up to Mass Ave. So maybe as we're moving forward, and I understand in the Mass DOT plan, they're talking about synchronization of the lights and perhaps having something down there on the bike path. But as an added step, I think what I'm hearing is um, maybe beyond just the bollards, the big uh, lumps of concrete there, perhaps something similar to what they have in Lexington on Bow Street, or something you get from the committee that, you know, from your colleagues in Lexington or Bedford. There's a couple places on the bike path that are like at 4225, but it's actually light controlled too. Yeah. So oh, that really? may oh. Be, yeah. So that may be the answer too. Okay, maybe that's. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we have a um, recommended vote of no action. Did we have a motion? I move no action. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing votes. Moving on. For approval, memorial for Johnny Kelly. And um, 
it was for um, from our public memorials committee and they have um, accepted mr. Kelly's um, mr. mr. Kelly's um, <coughs> Excuse me. our request for mr. Kelly to be memorialized um, one one question I did have perhaps for um, Doug is are we the, are we now tasked with selecting a location? <laughs> uh, more or less. Um, it's something we have to look at if, if we want to um, figure out uh, how we want to examine these types of requests in the future. We can sort of look at that a little bit more comprehensively. But I think for now, it's sort of put on put on us. I don't know if anybody else has any sort of comments on that. Okay. Um, I personally don't have an answer for this. I was kind of hoping the Public Memorials Committee would have a suggestion, but seeing it, but is there isn't one coming? Um, perhaps we could refer is like could perhaps we could ask the chair to find a suitable person to make a recommendation. Um, perhaps Mr. Duffy is interested. Perhaps we should find out where he lived in Arlington and see if there's an intersection that lives nearby, or if there's a running path that he enjoyed, or you know something that's particularly. I personally have no idea. Mm -hmm. Care. From reading the materials here, it looks like his primary connect. Oh, Ms. Krapelka knows. Yeah, all right, she does. I was going to call Billy Walsh. I was going to say, I thought with Billy Walsh. I have never talked to this gentleman, but there was another friend of Mr. Kelly who sent me the other part of the resume that very much was very much involved with Johnny Kelly. So I was we got permission to call Bill Walsh to find out and ask him maybe he meant to tell us where he lived and what would you like to do and what have you. But he, whoever, Mr. Walsh and whoever he gets responses, my understanding is going to have to pay for whatever we do. The town won't pay for it. Per, per, um, perhaps you can inform Mr. Walsh that yes. in your so conversation. Hopefully he may be back here. If I can contact him, he'll be back on the 23rd. Thank you. The other piece is we can ask for a more detailed recommendation from the Public Memorials Committee with respect to their own ideas. Yes. I think uh, this is a little bit um, unusual because I think typically when we've had requests like, well, not that I've been here that long for it, but the requests I've seen come through, usually the request is associated with a specific yes. mm -hmm. area that yes. they would like us to, to, to designate. And I read all this material. is it very interesting about Mr. Kelly. It looks like his um, primary connection to the town was through Arlington High School, mm -hmm. which, which means we'd have to get school committee colleagues involved too. So, so perhaps we'll, we should take a vote tonight saying that we will, we are happy to support a memorial for Mr. Kelly and um, with, we'll then put it on a later uh, agenda at a later date after we come up with uh, the proper way to do so. Does that sound, anyone want to support it? So moved. Do we have a second? Second, sorry. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Or nothing. Um, for moving on, for approval, abandonment of easement, 55 Venner Road per town meeting vote. Mr. Heim. So what you have uh, before you in your packets is basically the legal instrument that the owners of the property at 55 Venner Road need in order to, be, in order to uh, basically have this easement released. The board will recall that it previously signed an agreement which set forth terms of how this easement would be released, or these exterior lines as they're more specifically called. And then that matter had to go to town meeting for ultimate approval to release this easement. Uh, and town meeting did approve uh, it subject to the conditions and terms that we had set forth and the selectmen had previously agreed to. The final step in this process is actually proving the actual abandonment of easement. Um, you'll note that this particular document doesn't contain all the details that the previous vote does, but all it's doing is referencing that vote. It doesn't mean that all the other parts of the deal that was worked out between the town manager and Mr. Leone uh, and I with respect to um, the transactional piece of it isn't there. It's just this is what's getting filed with the registry of deeds to actually extinguish the exterior lines on that property. Um, the board needs to take a vote to approve this. Um, there might be, need, we might need to do some administrative changes to this specific document because Mr. Greeley isn't present. I don't believe we have a notary present. But as long as the vote, uh, the board votes to approve it, it can then be signed by each one of you at your 
you know, convenience and things like that. Mr. Greeley obviously isn't present, so we'll just need to make a few minor administrative changes. But the substance of it, you can vote on now for approval, and we can make sure it gets signed by everybody by, and notarized. Do you have any questions about it? Um, any questions? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, um, so since we're signing this without the attached agreement, or we're talking about approving this without the attached agreement, like how does, um, just like how does that play out? Like the agreement is still in force, and this, like you know, if the if the other parties don't sure. fu fulfill their part of the deal, how does this how does this not happen? We essentially have a contract. Yeah. Um, and then we just have to. I mean, I, I certainly trust that these individuals are going to make good on their promises, but we would have a very basic contract where we'd sue for damages. Got but I, I don't think that's thank you. a very likely scenario. At all. Excellent. Um, I'd like to move approval to abandon and release said easement to the lawful owners. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? I just want to make sure, Attorney Hines, is that appropriate motion? It's a move for, uh, yeah, to approve this, this uh, abandonment of easement. Yes. And release. Okay. Thank you. We, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four. Nothing voted. We're getting along very well tonight. Yeah. Should we move to table since we don't have a full board of the future board of select meetings, or do you want to go forward? That might be a good idea, Just but I, I, don't, idea. I don't see a need to rush that. Okay. Move to table. Second. Thank you. Um, motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, correspondence received. We have a, a very nice thank you from uh, Ms. Starr and Ms. Carr Jones, um, from, uh, who were formerly members of TAC, who we had a um, nicely recognized at town meeting as well as a letter of support of the parking benefit district from uh, Catherine Bensky, um, the owner of Helena's and from the Arlington uh, Business Arlington Center Business Association and we also in our packets had a letter from uh, Kersey Allison Ampey uh, regarding a uh, signage um, at the foot of the Sims property um, and that perhaps if you, is there a motion for that one? Uh, so I'm, I move receipt of them all in particular for the um, no turn on red sign at the bottom of Sims. Uh, I'd like to refer that to TAC and I, I don't I think it probably well, some context for would help with TAC because so in the last few months, we've seen uh, Sims open up, or Arlington 360 open up, which means, of course, we have traffic up there where we didn't used to have traffic. We had some uh, islands put in at Grove Street that have generated some excitement. And uh, I, uh, with any project, TAC will go back and look at it again you know, after it's been in action for a while and see what uh, modifications. And I'm not sure that the time is ripe for that, and I'm sure that they are wise enough to make that decision. But so I guess I'd like to send this to them in that context. <coughs> but I think that the, the, I just want to double check that they really are planning on opening that back up and looking at it again and uh, sending this along. Um. Mr. Kiro had a pained look on his face. I have a pained look. That. I have a pained look because I'm very familiar with this intersection. Yeah. I go through it several times a day. So um, you're right. There was a lot of excitement when the islands went in, even though that was based on a, on a plan that was several years um, old and was part of the, the Sims um, approvals. And at the time, um, I had actually um, facilitated a meeting between uh, Michelle Barry, who was the chair of the Sims Neighborhood Advisory Committee, and um, the DPW engineering just so that they could explain exactly what was in that plan. This whole issue about the right, right on red came up at, at that time and I know that um, Officer Rateau had weighed in to that discussion at, at that time. Um, we should probably have that in writing uh, and I can, I can get that to us. At the time, and, and I don't want to misquote him, uh, he felt that um, Based on sight lines, um, a no turn on right wasn't um, necessitated at, at that intersection coming down there, based on sight lines, because there are good sight lines to the left, and I guess typically that's the standard for no turn on right sign, is whether or not you can see the traffic coming from your left. The problem, 
at this intersection is that it's not one intersection. There are actually two distinct intersections there. The, um, the, the lights are, are somewhat synchronized. They seem to be better over the last month or so. And if somebody takes a right on red coming out of Sims, the stop line for the next intersection is less than half a house length away. It's actually one car length away. And they can't actually see the signal. So anybody who's not familiar with the intersection is running a risk of running right into the middle yeah. of Brattle and, um, and, uh, and Summer and Hemlock. Um, there's no warning what, whatsoever. So I actually think that it's a much more urgent need for this particular sign. I think that the islands, looking at how they're working, I, I, I totally agree that that should be looked at more comprehensively. But I, I feel so strongly about this one that I, I, because I actually come down out of Sims a lot of times, I'll actually come through the neighborhood and come down, down the hill, uh, cut, cut around. Um, I cut through, through the project. I feel so strongly about this one that I'm, I'm tempted to actually make the recommendation that we, um, that we actually approve that sign um, subject to, to confirmation that it doesn't violate the, the manual uniform of, of traffic control devices for this, this instance without, you know, but I mean, it's up to. Would you be amenable to um, perhaps for this issue that we definitely have some time sensitivity around that we refer to Officer Rateau and say, you know, uh, this to is look at from that aspect right. rather than and from the aspect of just sight to, Just to cover. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. And I'd, then I'd, I'd be happy with that. Because I think the concern is, I, my understanding is that the development up top is about half full right now. Mm -hmm. um, Brightview is now starting to, 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 to sell. So you're going to have a lot more uh, traffic coming down. But um, and, and I, I will say to, to the, the manager, I should note that, that um, the, the Brattle Hemlock Summer intersection there actually is a sign there in front of the the, the home there's the morrison home that says um bike stop on the line there's no line at all and and i so that that's i think that exacerbates the problem that's probably why people are running it so so there perhaps, are some, perhaps some through the chair refer to the manager um and um instead of sending this attack or officer or tow if it were sent to attack it would be referred to him to go look up traffic rules and orders write up the appropriate verbiage give it back to the board of select correct if that's okay is that a motion we i think i'm fine with that second yeah. i would draw my original motion yeah. we have a motion and a second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. um now new business mr kropelka mr Hahn. adam Two quick pieces. Uh, as the board knows, tomorrow night is the annual Paul Harris dinner for Rotary. And uh, Arlington Police Officer Mike Hogan is being honored as a Community Person of the Year, along with Patsy Kramer and Bob Tosi. And I have the honor of introducing Mike Hogan for the award, so I'm very honored to, to do that. Uh, and also, I um, was lucky to have the opportunity to attend the Mystic Valley NAACP breakfast uh, this past Saturday. Pearl Morrison, who is an Arlington resident who plays a big role in organizing the annual MLK event, uh, had come in, sat down with me, asked me to join the chapter, which I did, uh, and then come to the breakfast. So my wife and I attended, and it was just an outstanding breakfast, and I was very happy to be there, and I just wanted to make mention of that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Bond. Um, just one thing, just because we asked for it and we get it, and I just want to thank the town manager and thank Joan Roman through the town manager for providing us with the sort of monthly filter request summary. I'm not going to highlight some of the, there's usually at least half a dozen that bring a little smile on my face when I see some of the questions and departments that they're directed to. But if you could please, um, on behalf of the board, thank Joan. Thank you, Ms. Roman, for, for doing this, because I know she has 5,002 things to do, and this is 5,003, but we definitely do look at it, and, and it's some interesting information in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunn. Um, two items. Uh, one is all in our packet, packet or email? Email. Um, there was talking about the progress on electronic documents for meetings, and um, I guess Adam K is looking for feedback from us as we're using the, I guess we're using it at a meeting coming up in the next couple months or something. So and he was looking for feedback, but it, and I'm still in an email thread with him. I haven't figured out exactly what it is he wants from us and what the time frame is. Did, are you following that one or? Um, yes, yeah, so not, not so much feedback from us. Okay. Um, 
because we don't obviously don't have any feedback to give. Yeah. Um, but yes, over um, the next few meetings, there we will be running, or I shouldn't say we, the office will be setting up um, an agenda, starting to use the tool um, as part of a trial. And I believe, and we're going to try it the twenty third. The twenty third. Thanks. So, uh, so that's an exciting step forward. And Marie, you might know. And then, when will we have? We'll we'll see the agenda via Novus. On the twenty third, I think you will if we can have it set up. Okay. And we'll practice that night, so that should be fun. Great. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and there will be paper um, as well <laughs> yeah. at the meeting. But um, so a after that. Um, I will circle back with Adam Kay and ask what he really expects out of us. Okay. Is that cool? Love it. Great. Yeah. Um, my second item is, um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. it's after uh, Memorial Day. Can we have ca business casual until Labor Day? Uh, yeah, yes, we certainly can. Yay! <laughs> no more ties. <laughs> We'd have alternative transportation meeting too. Oh wait, oh, that, yeah. that, that was on, uh, I had that coming up. Yes, we'll uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, I'm good for whatever day you want. Okay. New business, Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you done? That was it. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I did want to note that um, tomorrow night the master plan committee is having what they're calling a this or that a, a um, design preference. Um, uh, public meeting where, where a number of images will be shown, giving people uh, the opportunity to, to, to choose you know, this or that or, or, or characteristics of Arlington or of other communities that they find uh, attractive or, or not. I attended the uh, advisory committee meeting last week. I saw kind of a dry run of it. So I regret I won't actually be there because I will be attending the, 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 the uh, Paul Harris um, dinner, but there will be um, an online version, I believe, that will also go out afterwards, although I think that the interactive uh, forum will probably be a little bit um, uh, nicer. I know that they plan to use uh, technology similar to what we've uh, used at town meeting with audience response yeah. system uh, to, to, tr to try to uh, take the mood of folks. So anybody who's uh, looking to plug in once more to the master plan committee, that's tomorrow night at 7 in the um, town hall auditorium. The only other thing I wanted to mention, um, I did, um, I have been in contact with town council and um, I did, um, you know, let the, the chair and, and uh, Ms. Kropelka know that I'd be asking for an item, item on our agenda, the, the next agenda um, request that we um, have a hearing on the implementing regulations around the public performance. Um, I know I've been talking to town council and, and please correct me if I'm, if I'm misinterpreting this. Even though this hasn't been, um, the bylaw hasn't been um, approved by the Attorney General yet, we can hold the hearing on the implementing regulations um, and policies um, contingent upon approval from the AG's office. And I've asked that we please consider having that, uh, with my colleagues' approval, please consider having that hearing so that we can move forward on that. Given that summer's coming, we would lose the whole, the whole season if we're unable to. Can I, I just, I don't know, can I just, I, one, yeah. I just want to note one thing. We already have a town bylaw that allows for public music, and but we don't have regulations or a process. So to start getting going with respect to developing some regulations takes place within that specific context, not just you know a general new bylaw or something like that that has no sort of root. And obviously, we do want to make sure that we have a lot of respect for the state's process and don't rush the state or make the state feel like we're doing something that would potentially cause any concerns for them. But I will help make sure that that's navigated properly. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, I had um, a couple things. One is that um, we had a meeting at 6.30 tonight, myself, um, Al Tosti, the chairman of the finance committee, and Bill Hainer, the chairman of the school committee, to appoint um, or to reappoint a member of the Permanent Town Building Committee. And so Miss um, Suzanne Robinson has been reappointed to a three-year term. Um, second, in, on July 28th, um, that's, our next, that's our July meeting, Marie? Mm -hmm. I, I think that that should be our alternative transportation day. So write it down and um, please. What day again, sorry? July 28th, okay. the July meeting. Um, so don't show up in a... Um, car by yourself because we will be watching and um, finally I, um, I 
know that they, we have many talented students um, in Arlington Public Schools, but I do want to recognize um, my younger cousin, uh, Julie Foran, who was awarded, um, firstly, she was, she's an Arlington High sophomore, she was awarded, uh, she was named the regional winner of the Gold Key Scholastic, Scholastic Art Award in February, and last week went down to New York to receive um, a silver medal on the national level at Carnegie Hall. And so I am, uh, you know, I know the whole town's proud of her, but I am particularly proud, as is my whole family. So, um, thank you. I was going to ask you. if that was Jamie's kid. Yeah, so we, um, we're very happy about that. And that being said, no, I have no further new business. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nothing.